Well, basically, economics. Okay. Um, I, I, I guess I have come of the opinion now, personally, that I am interested in dealing with images, the images of Afro-Americans. And uh, consequently, what I've decided to do is to work in the arena or in the space that that's possible you know, and happening. Uh, like, I, I'm now right in the midst of shifting into, I guess, uh, on, on one hand, it's like diversifying in terms of what I do, but largely what it has to do is shifting to other spaces of cre being creative. Painting, video art, you know, installations, there's a lot of other things that I've decided to try to do now. Now, this doesn't mean that I've completely abandoned cinema as a place to try to operate in. It's just that I essentially have gotten to the point where I feel like, in terms of controlling my development, um, I, I don't, first of all, I don't like the gap between having a concept and being able to actualize a concept. I don't like all the hoops I have to jump over just to even get into position, to even fail. You know what I'm saying? Um, I mean, if a horn player, you know, I told somebody once before that if a saxophone player had to blow, <coughs> Then take a little card out of the saxophone, mail it away. Four days later, he would get that card back, stick it back in the saxophone, then he would hear that note. The learning curve would be kind of steep. The conclusion that I've come to is that I want to be more like a stream, in the sense that if it's going down a hill, and there's a rock in the way, it's just going to reshape itself and go into other areas. I'm really not envisioning this as a depressing thing. I mean, it's like coming to terms with the fact that I have visions in my head, have had for some time, that in all likelihood, I will never be able to do. But that doesn't mean, say for example, that the creative impetus of those particular ideas don't manifest themselves in some very go forward as cinema makers. I don't believe cinema, in terms of actually shooting film, is the future for black Americans. Because I think essentially what happens is, even when you can raise the money to make films, the, uh, the percentage of people who actually get to practice that particular medium is so narrow. Like say for example, if you look at hip hop or jazz or any of those particular mediums, one of the things that I think defines them is they become manifestations of group genes. I mean the group genes of our community. In the jazz scene, you got you know everybody from Charlie Parker to Monk to Coach, and you got a whole bunch of people who are obviously amazing at the same time. You see the same thing in hip hop, whatever the standards of that particular community are. Because it's so difficult to make films, I mean, people make films, and then maybe it may take them another six or seven years to make another film. That's really too slow to develop. You need to be able to work very quickly. I think one of the things that's critical, that, you know, that I think speaks more to a kind of conceptual underdevelopment in the community than anything is the lack of reaction to hoop dreams which I think was really an amazing moment, but really spoke to how disillusioned the filmmaking community is. Because what Hoop Dreams really did to me is it demonstrated that you can originate on video and the film, that project can then perform in the theatrical context effectively. I said to somebody once before that uh, I made this point about Hoop Dreams and it being in the theater and how, in fact, if you survey most people, they don't even have an idea it was originated on video. Most people, so they have they no care. clue and they don't care. And they said, well, that was because it had a great story. As if, if you shot in 35 millimeter right. with a horrible right. story, it was going to be a hit. <laughs> you know, you always got to have a great story. That's a given. But there is an issue of legitimacy, say, for example. A lot of people, quite frankly, I think it's more psychological than anything at this point. They think that if they shoot on video, there's something illegitimate about it in terms of image making. It has not been legitimized for people. You know, and I think black Americans particularly, I've come to the conclusion, have a real problem with this question of legitimacy. You know, it's, it's critical in terms of what we do so that people feel somewhat uh, bad if they feel like if you say you're making a film, and they said, well, what are you shooting? You say you're shooting on video. It's kind of looked at as if it's not real, artistically in some kind of way. Video is definitely, it is the future. We, any way we can make images, that's what we can do. We will transform the medium, you know, so that it can accommodate what we do. But it's no way, say, for example, when I started off, I said I wanted to, I started off at Howard, I wanted to be an architect. And I came to the conclusion that I'd rather, not, I'd rather be a failed filmmaker 
than a failed architect because I always felt that black Americans, black people didn't have the economic base to allow me to do the kinds of things I envisioned doing as an architect. And I, I couldn't really foresee a career just drawing things that, you know, by large wouldn't be able to be built. But now in terms of film, it's like it's so expensive as well that basically you just can't play. Say for example, even if you do successfully get the million dollars, I mean the low end together, it seriously takes to make a feature length film on 35 millimeter, you're not in the mind to be playful. You're not in the mind to be playful. If you cannot play, we will not be able to embody ourselves in that particular medium. The, the breakthroughs in the music always come out of those spaces that we control where we can play. Whether it's bebop, you know, after hours is when the innovations happen. Hip hop, a person with a broomstick in their hand, a record player, and a mirror, that is what it comes out of. It does not come out of large amounts of subsidy that you first of all had to jump through the hoop, somebody's hoop, to be authorized. I no longer want to proceed in any way where I feel like I have to be authorized before I do anything. First of all, I just want to reach over here and hit AJ because AJ and I had this discussion 10, 12 years ago. Right. And he is very, he is very loquacious and my phone bills, um, I lived in Brooklyn, he was living in Atlanta at the time, and I got stuck with the phone bills talking about this. Um, and I'm hitting him because um, I did it and he didn't. So, I think it's a very interesting argument and one that we haven't talked about um, the issues of power around film and video, which is what I think it really comes down to. Film production in this country, 35 meter, meter, millimeter feature filmmaking is tied to Wall Street, period. And right now, people are playing the stock market and, and lotto with filmmaking, period. So, my background is in, is in painting, um, film, photography and dance and um, art forms where you can be by yourself in a room all day long. Um, but I went to NYU and was raised as a film snob for a very long time, which is why a lot of the discussions that AJ and I had years ago were so interesting to me, as well as discussions that another filmmaker, Michelle Parkinson and I were having. AJ and I used to talk about old Motown, what it would be like to look at um, the beginnings of Motown and, and, and try to create something like that as it related to film, whether you were doing Super 8 film or 16 millimeter film, and now we can talk about video as well as pixel vision, because if you were talking about the 35 millimeter feature creature, which right now, the black community, when you say, I am, I am producing something, there are two questions that are asked. Who's in it and when is it coming out? And I think that those are the wrong questions and that we need to reevaluate when we started asking those questions and why. Because there are some wonderful films that have been released that the community has not gone to see. Rude closed yesterday, that's a Jamaican Canadian film, and Man by the Shore's opening May the 17th, Raul Peck's film, which I, I hope you'll go and see. But 35 millimeter production is very seductive because in this country what it means is that somebody has pointed the finger at you. And so then everybody turns to look at you, who are the flavor of the month for the moment. The labs treat you differently. Your friends treat you differently. People who hated you and talked about you badly behind your back call you and want to hang with you and like break bread. It is phenomenal. Relationships are destroyed over the 35 millimeter feature creature because it's related to issues of power and control. And for the moment, as long as your film is out and in the theater, you get to be the person who has the power who everybody wants to bask in the glow. But the reality is that a lot of stories that are being produced can't handle being a 35 millimeter feature film that's going to hold an audience's attention for 90 minutes. And a lot of us have not had the consistency of storytelling to be able to do it enough to get better visually. Right. You've got to practice it to get better.
what I fought for and what, what my primary interests are. There's another kind of cinema that's interested in kind of emotional and intellectual and political and cultural and aesthetic issues, and I think producing it is probably similar to publishing in university presses where you get great stuff, but you don't get like a whole lot of money. And I think it is important to talk about the, the technical issues, because I see um, film people here, um, in that the technology does exist where, yes, you can either shoot on film and transfer video, do all of the cutting and wait for somebody else to pay for the match back to 35 to show in a theater. But also, if there is enough interesting video work coming out of our community, people will get the equipment to show it. They will raise the money to get the projectors. And I guess finally, if, we're, if we, um, we spend a lot of time talking about one of my least favorite words, but em empowerment and what it means to be empowered, but yet we make choices that are so against what we talk about. In 35 millimeter Hollywood production, every step of the way you have to wait for somebody to knight you so that you can advance the next step. And there's choices, it does not have to it does not have to be that way. Um, that you can begin to work with a consistency of vision and to play. And the notion of playing in any art form um, is critical. In coming from dance and, and, and music, there was this ability where you go in a studio and you play all day. And out of that play, you are able to uh, shape your own particular kind of aesthetic. But when you are trying to produce feature length work, I don't care if it's in 35 or 16, if you are trying to produce work that you cannot afford, you do not have room to play. In 35 millimeter filmmaking, there is very little room for spontaneity because you need three guys to move the tripod and the camera on the other side of the room to get something quickly. Quick is not in it. It's just not going to happen. And so it's not about just raising the money to get it in the can, it's raising the money to get your vision in the, in the can and not just um, making decisions based on what you don't have, starting out as a deficit um, all the time. And so I think that there is a real value in looking at different kinds of formats. In my own work, I've made 15 films now, and they range from Super 8 to 35, and the last four of them include film, video, I shoot two and a quarter slides and scan them, um, as well as a lot of manipulation in the computers. And if you look on the post-production side, Avid, which is what a lot of people cut on now, there are inexpensive versions of it where essentially there's desktop video. So the 35 millimeter production at the moment is actually the most antiquated form of production. And movies don't make the most money playing in the movie theater. They make it in home video, and American movies make the most money in Europe, in video. So people will look at anything. Audiences do not care about format. All you have to do is look at the Rodney King video. <laughs> and at some point, it was blown up to 35. Audiences do not care if it's film or video, it's only people on the inside who go, oh, well, you know, it's, it's video. Um, but audiences don't care as long as the story is interesting and compelling. People right now are shooting reggae parties. No story. My husband was showing me something last night. He says, you know, I want you to check out this tribal ritual that's happening. No credits, no stories, it's like a lot of people in the room, wildly dressed, doing things that we'll talk about another time. Um, but shot on low-end VHS, and it's in, it's in the local video store. So if you, really, if, you, if you really are interested in the possibilities, then you have to be willing to explore the possibilities and not just buy into um, 
kind of the dominant theme right now, which is if it's not on television, then it hasn't been validated, and therefore you can't spend your money to go see it. And I'm done. 